So hello everyone. Uh, I'm Seng Min Lee. I'm a University of Illinois. Uh, I'm from University of Illinois, and uh, I'm a PhD student advised by Professor John Popovich. So today I'd like to present my recent research work on concrete characterization using ultrasound and physics-informed neural networks. So uh, there are many non-destructive testing methods such as rebound hammer, ultrasound pulse velocity, vision-based method. And not only the method listed here, most of the method, they are the point-by-point -point measurement, and also they are not very optimized for the inhomogeneous material characterization. But the concrete is inherently an inhomogeneous material. So to overcome the limitations, I'd like to propose a method um, that can characterize a spatial dependent material characterization, a uh, spatial dependent material uh, in situ using two techniques. So the first one is elastic wave propagation, which directly reflects the material properties. And the second one is uh, machine learning, uh, which has been success in many other fields to solve difficult problems. So before introducing physics-informed neural networks, I'd like to briefly mention about artificial neural networks, ANN. So ANN is one of the most popular uh, machine learning techniques. And then uh, there are many architecture in ANN, such as the CNN, RNN, LSM, and so on. But here the figure shows uh, that is the basic architecture of the ANN, uh, which is a fully connected neural networks. And then it consists of like input layer, hidden layers, output layer. And hidden layer, uh, it consists of many uh, neurons, and each neuron has a weight and bias. So once the input, uh, input passes to the neuron, then the neuron's weights are added to uh, in input, input data, and then the bias is edited. And then the result is fed into activation function, and then it goes to the next layer, and so on. So here the output, the ANN output you have, and then also the vector P uh, represent the input data. And then the ANN, uh, it can be expressed function F as a mathematical expression, and it's a function of theta, which is ANN parameters such as weights and the biases. And then typically ANN requires a training process to get good, to get, uh, to get good result. Um, to get a good result. So, and then um, the training process is basically reducing the cost function uh, using a gradient descent algorithm. And then cost function is, is basically depends on, uh, depends, on the, depends on the application, but for the uh, regression problem, usually mean scale data is used. So ANN is typically working very well, but there's uh, some problems and limitation. For example, ANN does not have any prior knowledge uh, in terms of the problem we want to solve. And then also it requires a lot of data to training uh, and also to predict the behavior we want, uh, we want to solve. And then also um, it does not work really well about the data, uh, unseen data resign. So uh, we need some another approach. Um, and then very recently another approach has gained uh, attention, so which is uh, physics informed neural networks, PINs. So the main characteristic of the pin is a physics-based equation or governing equation is embedded or we are giving the information to, as a, uh, to the neural network as a prior knowledge. Uh, and then the physics-based uh, physics equation, usually uh, they have the form of the partial differential equations, PDE. For example, the heat equation, diffusion equation, or wave equations. And the pin can be used in two different ways. Um, the forward problem and then inverse problem. So basically the forward problem is to solve uh, the PDE using the initial and then the boundary conditions. But the inverse problem is basically uh, predict the coefficient of the PDE or predict uh, the forcing term of the PDE. So here I'd like to, in this presentation, I'd like to focus on only the inverse problem. And then how can we implement the physics-based equation into neural networks? Basically the most popular way is to modify the cost function here. And then the first function, uh, the first term here is the mean squared error. This is exactly the same form as you saw before in typical ANN, which is also called the data fit term. And the second term, uh, newly added here, is called the residual term or, or a fixed space regularization. So the details of the residual term, it depends on the governing equation you embed. So if wave equation is, as in this application, uh, the residual term is defined as follows. So the goal of this study is to solve the inverse problem um, using of the wave equation using the ultrasonic wave data and also the PIN model. And then uh, the coefficient of the wave equation is the basically wave velocity. And we are most interested in wave velocity because it is related to the material properties such as the elastic modulus. 
And the figure here shows the uh, pin architecture used in this study for 1D wave data. So if you see the, here the input layer, it accepts two features, time and then spatial coordinate x. And then the corresponding uh, output, which is the wave field data or such as the displacement you had. And if you see the below, there's another output, C0. This is the wave velocity. And then as mentioned earlier, we, are, uh, we do not give wave velocity as the information or training data, but we only provide the wave field data the, you, you had as a training data. But we give the governing equation to predict others. So basically, so C0, uh, this one is predicted from the training process of ANN or the PIN model by minimizing the cost function or residual term uh, indicated here. And the residual term, to calculate the residual term, as you can see here, um, it requires the output of the data. It should be partially differentiated with time and the spatial coordinate, which is the input data. So this will be done in, during the backpropagation using the automatic differentiation algorithms. Uh, and then for the 2D wave data, we just simply added it on other spatial coordinate here. And then this slide shows the experimental setup used in this study. Uh, basically, to calculate, uh, to obtain, uh, to collect the wave uh, data, we use the two different materials, steel and mortar. For, for both samples, we have a long load shaped geometry. And then for the steel sample, we do not have any defects that we are aware of. And for the mortar sample, as you can see below of the figure A, it consists of two distinct um, sections along the length. The strong part has a word to cement ratio as 0.5, and weak part has a word to cement ratio as 0.6. And then to generate the wave signals, um, we use the PZT attached to, to uh, the flat end of the signal, uh, attached to the flat end of the sample. And then to collect the wave field data, we use air coupled transducer along the sample every five millimeter. In addition to collect the <coughs> data uh, <coughs> experimentally, we also use the numerical simulation. Uh, we specifically um, uh, assume that some specific condition, for example, the slab, concrete slab, such as the concrete uh, building slab or the bridge deck. So ultrasound wave, uh, ultrasound wave excitation source is located on, on one side, and then ultrasonic receiver scans the top surface of the slab. So here it shows the numerical simulation, um, the result. So three cases, we solved the three cases, uh, numerical problem. The first case, it shows the cold joint occurs between two different section, two different mixture, and uh, this is very similar to the motor sample I described earlier. And then case two, uh, it shows the concrete that experienced, uh, experienced environmentally induced deterioration. So it shows uh, elastic modulus randomly uh, location by location. And then case three, uh, it shows the um, localized damage, uh, such as void or soft inclusion on a concrete slab. And then on the right slide, uh, it shows the wave field data, simulated wave field data. And then um, if we see visually check the wave field data, it is very difficult to recognize any wave reflection or defects due to the defects. And then the left figures, it shows the measurement data from the, our experimental samples, like mortar and then steel. And the right figure, it shows the wave field data from the pin model prediction. As you can see here, they are all look very similar, and this is expected because we used measurement data, only actually 80% of the measurement data to train the pin model. But the thing is, we are not really interested in the wave field data, but we are interested in the wave velocity, which we do not give uh, any information to the pin model. So this slide shows the wave velocity profile on two samples, and in each figure, the green salt line represents the experimentally obtained uh, wave velocity profile. Um, so we consider this to be the true, velo true wave velocity profile. And also the black solid line uh, connecting red and then black points, it is the prediction result from the pin model. And then black point represent the location where we provide wave field data to the pin model. And the red points, we do not provide any information even the wave velocity or wave field data to the pin model. So if you see the steel uh, data, there is insignificant variation along the lens, which is expected. But for the motor sample, there is some noticeable uh, the change starting at around 180 millimeter. This location is exactly matched the location uh, of the boundary between two different mixes. And then the top figures, 
the top row figures, it shows a true Young's modulus map. Uh, of course, this one is a simulated data. So, and then the red points, we use only the wave field data collected at those red point data to train the pin model. And then figures on the bottom row, it shows the prediction result from the pin model using the wave field data from the simulated data. And if you see here, uh, they all look very similar. And then the Young's modulus is actually predicted from, uh, actual, actually obtained from the predicted wave velocity uh, under the situation, uh, the density and then Poisson ratio is given. Um, and so the one thing to know is that uh, the Young's modulus map from the pin model, it shows it can provide high resolution Young's modulus map compared to uh, the simulation data. So this is the conclusion. Um, so we use the physics informed neural networks and also ultrasonic wave data to train the PN model and uh, to characterize concrete materials. More specifically, wave velocity profile is predicted as a function of space uh, from the experimental data, long road shape sample like steel and then mortar sample. And also simulated ultrasonic data uh, in concrete slab containing three different defects type. And then we use the wave field data from simulated wave field data. And we successfully detect the damage from the uh, predicted Young's modulus. And then PIN shows, so basically PIN shows the great potential to characterize concrete materials uh, in, in homogeneous material, not only for the concrete. So yes, so that is uh, my presentation for the research in progress. Here basically I show only the prediction of the wave velocity. But if we use different wave physics, then we can also calculate or predict uh, Young's modulus and then shear modulus at the same time. And we use the wave equation as a Gorbani equation, but you can use a diffusion equation or other transport equation for your application. So this is, uh, yeah, I think this is the next level of the typical ANN. Thank you for your attention.